All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, I want to go over some sound treatment. And basically what I'm doing here is uh, you guys have heard me talk about how everybody talked about the Audi being creepy quiet. And you guys heard me in video here talking about how quiet it is inside. A lot of people are creeped out by how quiet the Audi is just sitting in it with no audio playing. So my whole goal with the Audi was to remove the vehicle from the equation when it comes to listening to music. I just want people to hear the speakers. I don't want anything in the vehicle to influence the sound, even on the road. So this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make measurements in cabin of the XB, the Cyclone. So I want to make measurements with it largely untreated. Uh, I've done a little bit of Amplifier Pro on the roof of the vehicle and on the driver rear corner. But the whole goal here is to get measurements at idle with the air compressor running since it does have air ride and at 60 miles an hour. And I want to use this as a baseline going forward so I can show you guys um, what happens as you apply each type of material to the vehicle. So let's get started. Now what I'm going to do here is measure with an old school Radio Shack mic that will measure both A weighted and C rated dB readings. And for what I'm going to do here, I'm going to measure A weighted because that more closely resembles human hearing. And the other type of measurement I'm going to make is with SysTune. And SysTune, I have a six mic array here for it. This is the same setup I use when I'm tuning vehicles. And SysTune will give me a response graph across the frequency range. Think of it as it's an RTA measurement. So we're going to see that here um, in the vehicle both as we're sitting at idle and then I want to take a measurement of road noise. And as I treat the vehicles and go through the steps of treatment of the vehicle, we're going to go out of the road, we're going to take idle measurements, we're going to take um, road noise measurements, and we're going to actually see the improvements that each process makes. So let's uh, I guess let's hit the road and get out of here. Now I'm going to make three measurements. I want to get an idle measurement, a measurement with the air compressor running, and a 60 mile an hour road noise measurement. So I'm going to stop talking. We're going to go ahead and get the idle measurement with the A weighted microphone. And we're at 48 dB. Let me go ahead and get the measurement here on SysTune. Okay. Now we will hit the road and I will get 60 mile an hour road noise measurements and we will come back and get measurements with the air compressor running so we have those in the vehicle. Now one of the things when people do sound treatment on vehicles they often refer to it as sound deadening and you guys hear me have to raise my voice. So they'll, they'll do what they call sound deadening and for them sound deadening is the sound treatment. The trick is that's only one step in sound treatment. Sound deadening removes panel resonance and that is the first step. You want to get rid of the resonance of all those big flat panels. So you're going to use your Damplifier Pro, your Hush Mat, Dynamat, uh, Noiko, whatever material it is that you use, that is how you get your sound deadening. Now, other things that are important are absorption of airborne noise. And that is some of the stuff you hear with road noise. Bass makes your panel shake. If you apply your deadener, that helps reduce the shaking of those exterior panels, but it doesn't really absorb airborne noise. It just reduces the resonance of the panel. So, we're going to test throughout the process. We're going to test after 100% coverage with Damplifier Pro. On the floor, I'm going to apply the Second Skin's Heat Wave Pro, which is their jute and thermal barrier. And I'm 
want to use that to decouple the mass loaded vinyl. So to absorb noise on the floor of the vehicle is the uh, Heatwave Pro. That is also going to decouple my noise blocking material, which is going to be Second Skin's Luxury Liner. So that's sound treatment. When you reduce panel resonance with your deadener, when you apply your uh, material that absorbs airborne noise, like in the doors you guys saw in the videos, I've used Megazorb, the melamine foam. Uh, you can also use the melamine on the roof of the vehicle. On the floor, it's best to use something like the jute material because the foam is going to get destroyed on the floor. And as I come up here to the stop sign, what I'm going to do is make sure I'm set up to capture the measurement uh, at 60. I don't have to mess with the laptop and distract myself. But I think this is something that would be helpful because it will show you how each step in the process changes the end cabin noise. That's one of the big things with the Audi was the comment from Nick that this doesn't make sense. It's actually disorienting to drive the Audi, he said, because it is so quiet inside that when you're on the road, Nick's comment was, I see things past me. We're doing 80 miles an hour on the road, but it sounds like I'm sitting in a studio. So the visual experience versus the auditory experience, here I am talking about not touching the laptop and I'm driving with no hands, just using my knee, because that's what you do. So Nick's comment was that it doesn't make sense. What he's visually processing versus what he's hearing through his ears were two totally different things. And as a result of that, it was almost disorienting to him. Uh, to have that type of experience. As time goes on, he'll get used to it, but it is, it is a wild thing to be in a vehicle that is that quiet at 80 miles an hour. All right, so 76 dB, heavy weighted, is my interior road noise. I'm gonna go ahead and capture the measurement. Got it. So now we'll get back, I'll fire up the air compressor and get a measurement of the air compressor running both with a weighted noise and with SysTune. So that will give us a spectrum of measurements there just to, to have as a reference. If you guys remember in the last video on this where I talked about the initial sound treatment I mentioned that a lot of people will say that anything over X percentage of coverage with a deadener is a waste because you get to a point of diminishing returns well when you hit diminishing returns they are still returns and it's kind of like when you have a road bike and you go out and you spend thousands of dollars on a road bike I know because I've been there you end up at a point where you're spending like $100 to shave you know, grams off the bike. So you're just dropping hundreds at the bike in an effort to reduce weight of the bike. Well, it's a lot easier to just uh, reduce weight of yourself by exercising. But when it comes to sound treatment, everybody says it's diminishing returns. Diminishing returns are still returns. They still add up. If you're building a race car and you want to reduce weight, it may not be a big deal to remove plastic panels. It may not be a big deal to remove a seat, right? But if you don't do that and remove all the little things, wiring that you don't need, it all adds up and it all shaves weight of the car. So just like building a race car, you're goal-oriented and you have a purpose for what you're doing. When you get to sound treatment it may be a small increase for the extra effort you're going to but all of those small increases add up to something that is really wild to, to experience so we're going to get back to the house here and we're going to get a measurement of the air compressor uh, both with a weighted noise and a measurement on SysTune that shows us the full frequency range so let's go ahead and 
kick the compressor on. Seventy one DB. Now we have our measurements. We can go back and have these as our reference going forward. So our A-weighted noise measurements are 48 dB at idle, 76 dB at 60 miles an hour, and 71 dB at idle with the compressor on. So now let's take a look at our RTA measurements with SysTune. So let's go through these charts real quick. We're going to look at idle uh, which is the green line with the compressor on at idle, which is our orange line here. And then our purple magenta line is at 60 miles an hour. So on the far left side, we are measuring from 16 hertz to 20,000 on the far right side. And if you guys look, you'll see that our idle and compressor mimic one another from 16 hertz to, what is that? That is what? 40 hertz so they they pretty much paralleled one another and then at 63 we actually with the compressor on had a dip in the in vehicle cabin response and I think that's a function of just cancellation between um, the noise of the two um, the two measurements so I say measurements I think that's a cancellation between the cabin and the compressor so that the that that explains the dip we have there and from 63 hertz, we've got a peak at 99, and then a dip at 125. Another peak at, uh, what is that, One, 157? And we're looking at the orange line here. We've got a peak at 157. And it stays fairly steady all the way out to 1260, and it slowly tapers down. Then we look at our road noise. This is 60 mile an hour, the magenta purple line. Notice at 16 hertz, we are louder than we were with the 20 hertz peak um, with the compressor on. So this is compressor off on the road at 60 miles an hour and you can see just how much higher the road noise is. And this road noise, this is something you have to overcome when you're listening to your music on the road. The more road noise you have, the more you have to turn up your stereo, the more power you need to overcome it and the more honestly fatiguing it is on your ears if you can drop that noise floor and reduce it you won't need as loud of a system to enjoy it you'll hear details in music that you didn't hear with all of this road noise before so that's the purpose of what we're doing here i just wanted to let you guys see these measurements and walk you through what we have here and we're going to use these going forward and we're going to use these as we compare um, measurements with Damplifier Pro application. We're going to do 100% coverage in the vehicle with our deadener. And then we're going to come in and we're going to do our sound absorption material. We're going to do our Heatwave Pro, the jute thermal layer on the floor. We're going to do Megazorb on the doors and inside the cavities that I can reach in the rear quarter sections. So we're going to treat the vehicle and as we apply each material, we're going to make measurements in vehicle and see how each material affects these frequency response measurements. We're going to do it again at idle with the compressor on at 60 miles an hour. So this is going to be some good information. Uh, I don't want to make it a huge video, so I'm breaking it up and showing you initial measurements now. And you guys, if you want to see the rest of it, I'll see you next time.